Okay, now, I'm not even sure this uh, warrant's been called a Bedini motor anymore. Um, I've not seen anything like it before. But, um, but it works and it does everything it's supposed to do. Um, time will tell just as to whether or not it achieves over unity. I have to admit to being slightly sceptical. I suspect probably not. Anyway, what you can hear in the background is the motor running because it's um, not superbly built. But let me just run through the circuit here. This is the essential pulse motor bit with a couple of modifications. We've got the battery here, the switch here, which is uh, would normally be a reed switch, but if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that it's uh, in my case a little paper clip. Um, the coil here, which is the pulsing coil that makes the motor go round, and that feeds back to the negative part of the battery. Now across the switch, I've connected a diode, um, which is that way round, um, so that when the switch is opened, the voltage from the, the back EMF in the coil collapsing actually feeds through the diode into the battery and charges the battery. Across the diode I have now got a capacitor, there's a symbol for capacitor, um, which I put there just to quench the spark a little bit because my uh, my paper clip and piece of wire were wearing out because there's a the, the little bit of spark erosion which struck me as a bit of a waste of energy. So I've put a little capacitor there which just absorbs, quenches some of the spark across the contacts. Uh, I've actually got 470 microfarad because that's what I had handy. Um, ideally for a spark quenching it should be much smaller than that, maybe 0.1 or something like that. But um, interestingly when I put the capacitor across the motor did actually speed up. So I thought well if it's making the motor speed up that can only be a good thing, so we'll leave that one in. So that's there for spark quenching, the load's there for charging the battery and that's the basic primary side of the circuit. The other side of the coil is connected to a bridge rectifier and the bridge rectifier is connected to a capacitor um, for no reason other than that was already in the circuit. You don't have to do that, you can connect the rectifier straight back to the battery. Okay, the battery, the uh, capacitor just happened to be there in my previous circuit, so I left it in. So what we've got is a completely self-contained circuit there. So the battery powers the pulse motor, the, the back EMF from the primary side charges the battery through the diode. From the secondary side, the collapsing back EMF collapsing field which causes back EMF is sent through the rectifier pack through the uh, diode bridge and back into the capacitor and into the uh, battery so every bit of energy that's available in the circuit is being captured and so what does it look like uh, still nothing new there's a battery that's powering the whole thing and you could argue that if this was really over unity and because I've got the capacitor there I could take the battery away and the thing would continue to run well it doesn't do that I'll leave you to imagine why it doesn't do that. Uh, there's my capacitor across the diode and the little diode you can see in the background there. A the black chap. Okay, that's across the contact, which and there's the contact which is my paper clip. And there's the CD with the magnets on it. Uh, the reason it's making the noise, by the way, is because the CD is slightly deformed as a result of the weight of the magnets and is actually rubbing on the um, what was the CD drive, but is essentially part of the the bearing mounting assembly for the CD. There's my coil, which consists of uh, two sets of windings, uh, both wound on at the same time, as luck would have it. My original coil was built with two sets of windings, um, so I haven't had to rewind the coil. But I did originally have them in series, and now I've taken one set out to be the driver and one set out to be the secondary of the transformer. And that then goes to the little circuit board on which is the bridge rectifier and the capacitor. And then that feeds right the way back to the battery pack through the wires. Okay, voltage at the moment is 4.04 volts or thereabouts. Uh, when I first started this, it was running at about 4.13 or 4.2 volts. Uh, it does sometimes flick up and down, and the voltage of the battery does seem to be dependent on the speed of the motor. Uh, I've measured the current coming out of the battery. And that's real current, which is about 130 milliamps, which is obviously an average of the current being drawn. Um, I suppose if I was clever enough, I could work out the amount of power that's being consumed. Uh, looks like about 0.1 of an amp, isn't it? And about 4 volts. Um, so that's what, 400 milliwatts. So that's between half a watt and three quarters of a watt that this motor is consuming in order to sit here looking pretty and making a noise. Because what we don't know is when these little spiky bits come back and the energy comes from the ether or wherever it's supposed to come from and charging the battery again, um, 
and whether we can measure that with conventional instruments. We're told we probably can't. I've certainly not seen any demonstrations of that. And uh, personally, I don't believe that this thing is charging the battery. I think there's more current coming out of the battery than there is going in. Having said that, um, Bellini tends to suggest that the batteries take a long time to, to work out their new way of charging. And uh, so it may be if I just leave this for a long period of time and the batteries understand better how they're supposed to be charged. You'll have to pardon me if this sounds like drivel. <laughs> then, um, then maybe they'll get better, who knows. So I'm going to leave this thing running for a little while and just see what happens. And uh, who knows? I'll report back if it all gets very exciting.